Right, okay, how to remove and also remove the tire, remove the motor. So it's really, really important to remember that this isn't just a tire, it isn't just a wheel, it is actually a motor unit, this whole complete unit. So you're not just removing a wheel, as it were, as you normally change a tire. Um, this is actually a motor unit, so obviously it's got wires running through the spindle into the motor and back into the boards, which are inside the unit. So power down the unit, remove the handle. Um, for I wouldn't recommend this for people that aren't competent in actually taking stuff apart. The first part you can do, um, so these are basically covers and you just gently put the screwdriver underneath there and it'll flathead. You can pop those out like that. They're held in by sticky back glue, uh, tape sorry. Um, you just take them off, just be careful not to snap these. Just gently, same with all of them. So the entire edge. Oops. And it doesn't particularly matter which order you put these in. Well, yep, off he goes. Now, what you have here are four screws, bolts. You undo them, and all this is doing is holding on the plate, the white plate on this one, or black one on the elite. Not on the elite. <laughs> Get it right in a minute. Black and white on the uh, mini. This is going to be slightly different if you've got the Xiaomi Mini rather than the Mini Pro, which is all we have in the UK. When you are actually. There we go. That comes off, so you end up with a plate like that. Um, and those little screws were into these here. So when you put it back, you just need to line up with those and put it on. It sits flush. If you got it wrong, it'll sit proud and it won't hit rubble. So keep all those safe. Put them aside. Now, I think a lot of people have been tempted to remove these. Don't. Uh, if you do, there's two larger ones and four small ones, um, but just don't remove them. Basically, this is the motor unit inside here, and there's no reason whatsoever you need to be taking this apart. Um, so that's where you are now. So tire levers, if you've got a flat tire levers in here, it's a really tough beast to get off, but tire levers will remove this tire uh, from this point. So that's all you need to do. So if you're just looking to fix a flat at this point, that's all you need to do. Tire lever it. I would actually recommend standing it up and put a cloth down if you're worried about damaging that wheel. Um, and then just tire lever it off and then you're done. So now we're going to go a stage further. So finish with this if you just want to do that. If you want to remove the actual motor unit stroke wheel from the Mini, what you need to do is remove the battery first. So there's four bolts holding this on. Just don't do these. It's usually best to work from diagonals, so I'm not showing you right really, but you would undo this one, then undo this one. So what you need to be careful of is when you're removing the last one. Is you don't let that few units drop out, which it probably won't, but you just need to be careful that it doesn't, so you need to put your hand on it or thumb, hold it in place while you undo the last one. So there's nothing clipping it in, the only thing holding it in are these bolts. So, and this is going to expose the hole inside. You can also open that flap up if you want. It's going to make it a lot easier putting it back. Um, and that is the battery unit there. And as you can see, it exposes the hole of the inside. Put that very safe somewhere. One of the most expensive components. Um, what you're going to have is you're going to have three connectors which are recessed into little clips. Each of them have a little clip. And you've got a cable that runs through 
is those three, and also this table here. This one here, you will need a flathead screwdriver, and underneath the cable, you'll see a little clip. And if you depress that forward, so put the screwdriver under it and push it this way, it will push that clip down, and then it will enable you just to pull that fitting out, basically, like that. So be really, really careful with that. You don't want to, if you just, if you're just replacing something like you want to replace the tire and you want to take the whole wheel off and the motor unit off, you don't want to be damaging this cable because obviously you're going to write the whole thing off. Um, so that's that cable. These just pop out. You need to hold so you don't put any strain on any of the joints. You need to hold as close as you can to the joint and they just simply separate. Like so, and they're color coded so they go back the same way as they came out. So you've got blue, green, and yellow. Okay, and so when you're at that point, this cable here is in fact underneath the clip, you just pull it around that. Those are all then loose, and you've got a grommet which protects the cable from wear, and that sits on the silver part of the frame, not here, not anywhere else. It sits and it's got a recess, and so you can pull that out. So that's all loose now. Our next part, uh, these four bolts here, which are really, really tight, you need to torque them back up again with the same tightness. Um, so we just undo these. Crank them off. And what this is gonna do, I recommend leaving one, just, just snap it out, and but leave that one there, because this will free up the whole of the, of the whole of the motor, basically. So we're just trying to get my head in the way for you guys, but it's quite difficult. Uh, remove this, and these are big stonking bolts. Once, the same again really, when you remove, the same as when you're removing the battery, you just want to make sure on the last one, you don't just let the whole lot just fall out, because it will. This is the only thing. These four bolts hold on a, a metal plate. And once that's loose, uh, it just flops over. And the issue is, if you let it drop, you can sever the cable, damage it, because it's actually pivoting over the metal framework. And this motor unit, a single motor unit with a tire on, is 3.5 kilograms, just like the ender. So this is the last one now, just be really careful because you're actually supporting the motor unit. There you go. So what we've got here is the metal block, and then you've got a little recess in there. I'll show you in a minute, fits over the spindle and holds it into place. So that is the motor unit, now loose, as you can see what I mean, it could fall over and actually damage the cable. And you just need to pull that through, gently and carefully, not catching anything, feed it through. And there you go, that is completely off. Um, and so what you've got, is you've actually got, I'm not sure if you can see it on there, but the flat of this plate fits within that there. So that's solid. And that's what you're riding on, basically. And there's a grommet, so you keep that exactly as it is. And so if you're putting a new one on or you just want more access to your tire for replacing it, then there you go. That's as easy as that. Now let's put this back together again. I would take the opportunity to clean this out if you wanted to. And if you wanted to replace the mudguard, and then you just remove these four and that mudguard unit comes off with metal brackets. So you may have had an accident and snapped it or you may have bent the brackets and you can realign those brackets by removing them and bending them back into shape. Or just replace that unit. Straightforward as that really. So what you want to do is you need to feed these cables back through just like they came out. Quite fiddly through and the grommet. That's back in place. So don't worry about those cables for now. What you need to do is put this plate back on. Just need to make sure you got the plate on the right way. Sometimes it's just like that. So the plate will only go around one way. I don't think, I was just looking then, I don't think you can accidentally put it on the wrong way around, but you never know. Someone might succeed. Shouldn't be able to, I don't think. So, 
so that motor unit now there's a hand tight now when you put this back on you need to align the wheel so if you just plonk it on there and leave the weight of the tire and the motor pushing down the valve will catch on the mug off and spin it around as you can hear so don't do that what you need to do is actually allow the weight of the wheel off you, you take all the strain of that weight so you're lifting it up i don't know if you can see that you just tighten this up a little bit more. so when you tighten these up you need to get them to a point not too tight <laughs> not too tight like i've just done there swap them off again you need to get to a point where this is loose but almost tight and so as you can see there's a lot of movement there and you need to basically lift that up to there as high as it'll go and then you clamp this down and that should be sorted then there you go and then that will spin it'll spin no problem so put the other ones back in And you need to torque these back up to the same as they were when you did them. Because obviously, if these come loose, you'd have a serious accident because the whole wheel stroke motor will come off. And so will you. So torque them back up nice and tight. And just careful when you're putting things in and out that you don't actually cross thread it because otherwise you've stuffed it. And then just double check once you've tightened it down that they're all really tight. Because sometimes when you tighten them down they can loosen off the other ones slightly as it compresses. Right, so that's back in. And then all you need to do is basically this grommet, the rubber grommet is the same shape as the metal frame. So you just need to copy that shape but do that last. So put this cable through first, which sits. It's important when you're taking these apart, you actually look at where they were to start with. And so that feeds back round, like so. And then you can just push that back in to that fitting. Which is there. As I say, they're color coded these. So it's pretty straightforward, really. Push those back in. All the way in, make sure they're all the way connected up, otherwise, you're going to do this job again. There we go. Right, so what we've got now is we've got this cable here, goes into there, and then we've got these. So you push the connectors back in exactly the same as they were before. There we go, and then put the grommet in. Correctly and the grommet sits nicely in there. That's going to stop basically any moisture getting in. Now the last thing you want is any moisture in this, otherwise you're going to you're going to fry the board. So make sure that grommet's in. It just massively reduces the risk of any moisture coming in. You need to keep working it until it's level with the frame. And it's got a bit protruding, which obviously sits and seals between the battery and the, the, the body. Okay, so with this. Okay, so you need to be careful of this this time it's stuck, there's a grommet which has come out of the side of the body here. Just make sure that grommet's in there as well then. There's one this side where any wires go through basically, but there's no wires going through this side, but there is this side, so there's a, a minute that side. So the grommet thing it's stuck to the battery. Um, so just be careful of that. So to put it back in, you want to be sliding, sliding in in line. Again, hold it with your thumb. And once you've got one in, you can actually then disconnect. Which is, uh, 
uh, you can just um, release so I'm not just gonna release the pressure off with your hand. And then do the corners, make sure that it's going in the correct angle. It's actually, you need to have a visual check around to make sure it's back in the position it should be in. And it looks level and it's sealing up nicely. The worst thing you can do is get it in on an angle and then keep tidying it up and break something. set up when you took them apart basically. Oh. Okay. Right. That's that one on. And then you just fit these back on basically. Pretty straightforward this one. So these back on, match, match where the little mountain brackets are. Which is there. Doo -doo -doo. So if you are taking this tire off to do a puncture repair, um, you just need to make sure that you've got some really, really strong tire levers. These tires are exceptionally, exceptionally rigid. They're small little six and a half inch tires and can be really tough. So be prepared to battle with it. Uh, if you're really, really struggling to remove the tire, um, then take it to a motorcycle tire place and they should be able to just remove it for you with ease with one of their machines um, but if not some real strong tire levers and not only that um, some long ones the more levers you've got the better okay oh, I fetched that one which flew off when you're putting these back in really important because of the clip here you don't want to snap it off it's actually got a hook so you need to kind of bring it in this direction like so and then push in that way so that so it slides in if you try and place it directly over the top and push it in sometimes it can get caught and then it can snap that off so you don't want to be doing that there we are and let's do a check uh, actually listen to it see if it spins okay as long as it does then you've probably done it right. Boot it back up, works lovely. Put that back on. Steering bar back on. Job done. That's how to swap out a motor unit, replace a tire. Cheers guys.